Welcome back to the game. I'm here to talk about uh, part two of manhood and, and the foundation of manhood. And the reason why reason why I'm going through the manhood and the rules because this is going to be a long process because I'm going to get down to why a lot of people is not seeing their blessings and why no matter what you do and how you do and how much people pray for you why things not working out so I want to get down to the nitty-gritty of things because it's things that you're not learning in church it's things the preacher not telling you and and they can't tell you because if they piss you off you're not going to get an offer period and that's what they survive off of that's what they live off of that's where they get their means to survive that's how they able to afford their cars and all the other things because you're their income that's just the bottom line and you have to apply your crowd or uh, the thing that you need to apply to get the income It's all about money so I can't say nothing that gonna run you away because of the money but in my case um, I'm not asking nobody for money I don't I don't <laughs> you know it's not about money with me it's more about you getting where you getting because I'm tired of seeing you getting killed on the streets and you wondering why are you asking why are you trying to figure out why and a lot of it has to do with you the reason why you getting killed on the street and that's the reality and that's the pitch because again the less you know the more vulnerable you come the more you becomes a victim period so there's no way of getting around that there's no shortcuts it's, it, it is what it is and this is the direction I'm going to go with this so you can finish listening to the lies you can finish being deceived. You can keep on going with your everyday life. Me personally, I'm just giving you the information. So if you choose to go down a certain route and you, and you see my attitude like, I don't care. Because I'm looking at it as for, if a person trying to tell you something, you don't listen, then that's your problem. You don't listen. That's your problem you're not getting it. That's your problem. You're not trying to fix yourself. And where your children or your family or you could take your next generation to the next level. That's your problem. That's not my problem. But we black. Listen again. Again. That would be your problem. Because it's your responsibility as an individual to get yourself where you need to be. Where you're able to function mentally. Period. I mean, if you if, if you study looking at the election and you looking for a way out through that, it's not happening. It's not. It don't matter who's president. I don't even see why black people even care who president is, because at the end of the day, none of it is for a black person. So I don't see why y'all going crazy. And I'm not gonna let a speech like Obama or anybody try to manipulate me to thinking is it is it, a change. It had to change because. They can't go around killing a whole bunch of black people. That's why it had to change. And they see that's the route it was going. So they had to change. They didn't change because of, because of no other reason. When, when God wants you to change, you will change. We, whether you want to or not. That, that's just the bottom line. When y'all speak, it is. Period. They know that. The devil know that. Don't think the devil's stupid. You think the devil want to get rid of God? If the devil get rid of God, he gets rid of himself. The devil is not stupid. If the devil get rid of God, he gets rid of himself and everybody, including his children, off the planet of the earth. So he don't want to get rid of God. He don't want to do that. He need God order for, him, order for him to survive. So your logic thinking, you got to remember that. But God don't need him to survive. You have to understand that. I need God to survive. But God don't need me to survive. Understand that. That's like that's like that's like the disease AIDS and HIV. Get what I'm saying? You can get AIDS. But you don't have HIV when you get AIDS. But in order for you to get AIDS, you have to have HIV. So it's the same concept. God don't need us to survive. But we need God to survive, whether you good, evil, or not. You need y'all to survive. Period. And any angel, any dumb, 
um, any angel, any any spirit, anything understands that. You need God to survive. Period. So 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 again, you being tricked. Because all the devil trying to do is bring God under subjection. He's not trying to get rid of God. He can't get rid of God. You get rid of God. There's no there's no life. <laughs> Your whole life and everything evolve around God. Not the sun, not the moon, not the star. God. And that's what you got to understand. Everybody's connected to God. Whether they like it or dislike it. So so I'm, I'm here to educate you and bring you to a new level. Because there's a lot of teachings and a lot of lies going on. And right now I want to bring the real teaching and the real truth to you. That way nobody can deceive you. That way you get to hold your leaders in, in, in accountability. Because after you watch these videos, after you learn from these videos, after you, you learn something, they can't tell you anything no more. Because you're no longer ignorant. To what's going on and a lot and the reason why I'm going from the basic because I don't know who missed what what was missed where it, it where the falling came from when it came to black people I don't know where's the missing link here so I have to go from day one to all the way to now that way I could that way whatever was missed can be connected back to and put back in place because somewhere down the line it was something that was lacking it's something that was lacking and a lot of I know I could go into but I want to take everything step by step and just going to be a process it's going to be some things I'm going to talk about you say I already know this I already and I understand you already know this but I'm, I'm trying to get the other people who don't know this because because at the end of the day at the end of the hour this is what people hate to deal with the world, the way the world is because of things that already done happened in the past. And, and, and I'm not just talking about slavery. Understand me. When I'm, I'm making a statement to understand that a lot of things illegally bad happened. So they had to create a law because of those bad things that happened. Understand that. So, so you running wild in carelessness and you killing people, hurting people. Whether it's intentionally or not intentionally, the point is it's being done. They create a law for it. So now that they create a law for it, you going around looking crazy. Oh, they create a law, but yeah, but you have to understand. Somewhere ignorance took over, so they say, okay, so we have to create this for ignorance, basically. Whether you intentionally ignorant or not, the point is it, 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 it was created for that purpose. So it is what it is because a lot of things you have caused. And you can't blame it on the devil. You can't blame it on, on God. And you can't blame it on the white man. You have, it comes a time where you have to say, you know what? I'm all messed up. And I'm being nice about my language. Believe me, that is not the word that I want to use. Trust me on that. But I'm, I'm, I'm being nice about my language. Very nice. I'm being very nice about the way I'm saying things right now. Very nice. So it comes a time you have to look at yourself and say, you know, I'm all screwed up. Period. I haven't learned what I'm supposed to learn. I haven't studied what I'm supposed to study. I haven't gave God my best, but I want the best. And I'm just all screwed up. Period. And that's the reality. You don't want to deal with. You don't want to deal with when you was younger. You was goofing off. Nobody could tell you nothing. You was hard headed. You thought you knew it all. You were fast in the butt. But again, that's not even a word that I want to use. I'm being nice. Yeah, you were fast. Fast. Sleeping around. Sleeping with this boy. Sleeping with that boy. Getting pregnant by this person. That person. Yeah, you was fast. And you don't want to deal with the fact that you screwed up and dropped the ball. Not only that, but then you pass that same theory, that same thinking, that same behavior to your little daughters. So now your daughter fast in the, in the butt, sleeping with that little boy, sleeping with that little boy, sleeping with that grown man, want this, that, that. Yeah. So then and you then you want to blame the world for that. But the only problem is the world have to take care of your mistake. 
That's whether you Republican, Democrat, Independent. I have to pay for your mistake that you made because of what you did. And then, then the people that work hard, they got to take money out of their paycheck to give you welfare with. And, and again, I don't mind that. Trust me, I, I don't. I don't mind that at all. But what I do mind is that if something can be prevented, you prevent it. Period. That's what I mind. If you need help, that's one thing. But I don't want you to need my help for the rest of your life. That's another thing. So, 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 so this is what I'm dealing with. Because I'm not ignorant to the game. I'm not ignorant to things that goes on in the world. Whether it's male or female. It's not a sex thing with me. It will never be a sex thing with me. Because I know both sides of the playing field. So by me knowing both sides of the playing field. It will never be a sex thing to me. It will never. Because I could, I could tell you both ends. And I'm and I'm not I will not be manipulated because a person wanna say, well, female, listen, I'm not getting into that because again, this is not a sex thing. This is reality. And fellas, I'm really speaking to you. Because you're the one that that's gonna control the game. Not the female. And that's what you have to understand. You fall in love and she control you. That's your problem. You made that mistake. You made that mistake, and, and, and this is why I'm telling you. I'm bringing this all up because I, I believe me. I don't want to go over rules that a person should have known when they was five, eight, ten years old. These things you should have known at that age. And trust me, I do not want to even touch it. I don't, unless I'm talking to a little kid or or, or someone that's that's that's. Growing up where I feel like they should be taught this to. But an adult, I don't I don't feel like I should do this. But it's somewhere down the down the road, somebody we missed the boat. Somewhere down the road. And I know parts. But again, it's not the time for me to go over that. But I will but I will address things because this is a process. So the process I gotta make sure the basic is covered. And and I'm not getting it too God created Adam and Eve and then when he created the angel, I'm not getting into the theological of the creation. No. I'm just giving you the foundation of the setup in which manhood comes from. Manhood do not come from Paul. Manhood do not come from Peter. Manhood do not come from your pastor. Manhood do not come from the President of the United States. Manhood do not come from whoever you follow. Manhood comes from Yah. Period. Not Moses. Not your pastor. Not Peter. Not James. Not John. None of them. Yah. That's where manhood comes from. And you have to understand that basic understanding of the foundation of being a man. Because now you're starting to realize what's going on. And you have to take it serious and you have to take it meaningful because if you don't, it makes no sense in even knowing it. It makes no sense in even trying to learn it. For what? It means nothing to you. So so this this serves no purpose at all. If if that's your attitude, that's your personality on how you look at things and see things. So, um, this part two to manhood, and I hope you learned something. And I hope 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 you learned something that you should have learned. You know, and, and even if you know, I need you to understand where it come from. Let's say let's say your parent taught you this, but they didn't teach you where it come from. Now you get to understand where it comes from. Cause now I'm going to give you the ingredients or the main the main origin of of where manhood come from and where it all started from that's what I'm getting ready to give you so you can say it's a little bit of me giving you the introduction to you to God to y'all that's what you that's how you could take this but uh, it all based on you It's based on everything so um, here we go and God said 
In Genesis 1.26, God said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness, and let them have domain over the animals and the fish. That's similar to when God created the animal. Except for he created them after their after their kind, not his image and not his likeness, but after his kind image and likeness. So as you see now, God took this a step, a step higher. So you got to understand when you was created, you was created a step higher. You wasn't created on the same level as the animals. That's what man taught you. That's what school taught you. That's what science taught you. That's not true. You was created above that. So when you understand you was created above that, you start to operate that way. You start to think that way because your mind is going to transfer to what you know and believe your mind going to become that that's why Jesus said what was in a man's heart is so is he so so if you whatever there you want to become it you're, you're going to transfer to it so you have to understand when God created the animals he created you above them I'm going to read the scripture one more time because I want you to get this before I go into all the technical things that's in the scripture and why I call it the foundation because it's because again you go to church people read the scripture but what is it really saying as in details what is it saying in details and that's what I'm going to give you here today Genesis 1 26 and God say let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have domain over the animals and the fish that's what Genesis 1 26 says and it goes into a greater detail than me but again you need to go to the scripture you need to read it and I'm going to drill that into your head until I feel you understand how important it is for you to read things on your own because I, like I told you I'm not quoting scriptures I'm just not going to do that but I am going to give you the function as for the main thought of that scripture which I just did so I need you to go read the scriptures and I will give you I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures and I'm going to give you the scriptures, but it's up to you to go to those scriptures and read it for yourself and get the understanding. I'm not going to do too much of the reading like how other preachers did do. I'm not going to do that. You have to do that because, again, I'm a firm believer in you knowing the truth and not me telling you or trying to manipulate you into the truth. I'm a firm believer of you knowing for yourself. That's because once you know it for yourself, there's nothing nobody could do to take that away from you. I don't care. I don't care what happened in your life. There's nothing nobody can do going to take that from you. That's why I want you to read it. That's why I want you to go through it. Because this game get wicked, man. And I ain't even touched the tip of the iceberg. But I want you to understand the rules and where it comes from. That's why I make every video... Where it gives you a time to, if you go back and listen and listen and listen and listen, it gives you time to get it inside you. So so when I go to the next step, you already got this step master. Now let's go to the next step and the next step and the next step. Because again, once you know it, nobody can take it. I don't care if they put a gun to your head. Nobody can take it. I don't care if they beat you until you die. Nobody can take that from you because you know that you know that you know. And that's what's important. That's why I, I encourage you. That's why I don't I don't do it that way. Because I want you to know and I don't want you to be so easily taken. I don't want that for you. Because that haven't that haven't made nobody better yet. So that's why it's important that you go go and I'm gonna just read like I said. And you have to go back and you have to figure this out. I'm not gonna say this again, but I always say it in my video because I, it's very important that you learn things and see things for yourself and not just go by what the preacher or somebody's telling you. So I'm not a believer of that. And then we're going to get into a little deeper subject. But first, first, first steps first, and then we go to the next level, the next level, and so on, because this is a process. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have domain over the fish over the earth and the animals. My bad. We're getting ready to go through the scripture. I'm not going to do that. Okay. First of all, we have to look at some things in the scripture. 
Okay, the word man in this scripture means Adam in Hebrew. Adam, which is Adam. And that's where you get the word man in English from. I mean, the name Adam in English from as the name of man. Because in Hebrew, that means man. So, so that's number one. Number two is um, the image. When, when, when in this, in this, the image is defined as resemblance or look like. That that's image. Okay. So now we need to look at the word likeness, and that's where it gets interested. At that word means so many things until it's not funny. And you want to understand why? Because, because, because the word likeness, each word have its own definition that defines likeness. That's what's so awesome about this word. This word is not a word where you say likeness and boom, there it is. No, it's not that simple with this word. This word defines one word. Then that one word defines this word. This word defines that word. So it has many different meanings to it. Where you have to really understand what is this word really saying. And this way to where everything changes when you read this scripture. This scripture changes the whole the whole concept in which your preachers teach you. Because you have to understand what likeness really means. You, you really have to understand that. So so when you say likeness, you, you could get manner from it. And when you say manners, you could look at the person characteristics. A person custom, the way a person acts or behave. Interesting, because I got all that from the word likeness. Manners, person behave, custom. So that's a that's a lot of things. A way a person act. And in my last bit, I talk about the characteristics and the trends that you can get from the devil. You can pick up his traits. We back again to that. So again, is the description is awesome because you don't need to go to uh, Paul or Romans or none of that to get the understanding of what God Himself is saying. Now, now I'm breaking down the New Testament. Now you starting to see things that you read in the New Testament is right here. So, so now you getting to see that that how awesome God was and how awesome God is, and maybe you can understand Jesus' language a little better. Cause now you can start to see it's all in the beginning. Okay, characteristic, a special quality or a trend that makes a person different or a group different from others, custom, something that a person do regularly by on a regular basis. Something a person do regularly, day by day. And, and I like that. I like that. Because you all got the game twisted. You all don't understand. You don't go to church for God. You don't go to church because you going to God. You go to church, church, because of God. That's why you supposed to you supposed to go to church because you got God and you going to honor God through church. That's really supposed to be the main reason. You don't go to church and say I want to go to church for the Holy Ghost. That's not the purpose of church. So if you so so if you go to church saying I want to get the Holy Ghost. Then you go going to church for the wrong reason. Because when you go to church, you're supposed to go to church with God. You're supposed to take God in church with you. You don't supposed to go to church because you need to go get God. No, you have to take God in church with you. Because that's the case. If you need to go to church to God, then you're really saying, if you go home, God is still in the church. Once you leave the church, God is still there. So now you leaving God, and that 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 that's the wrong concept. God, you take God to church with you. You don't go to church because you want to go get God. No, you supposed to take God to church with you. So that that's the first concept, cause you just you just heard heard me read it. It's something that a person do on a regular basis. So so you supposed to take God to church with you. That's if if that's what you believe. But I don't believe again. My belief is not a Christianity belief because I don't believe you have to go to church 
for God to go to be with you. I don't believe that. And I just told you why I don't believe it. But if you do go to church and, and you, whatever, you go for the right reason. You don't go for the wrong reason because a lot of times the church is nothing but a, a, a club now. It, it's not where you go to be inspired or you go to hit a word and, and get encouraged or you go to be lifted up or you go for a new direction and see where God is leading, leading you as an individual or as a people. You don't go for those reasons no more. You go for because you like this guy, this guy like you, or you go because you want to get the pastor's attention, or you go because you want the pastor to tell you something good. No. You're going to church for the wrong reason, and you will never get his blessing for those reasons. Never. I don't care how much the pastor pray for you. I don't care how much offering you give. You will never get his blessing for the wrong reason. That's why Cain couldn't get blessed, because his motives was wrong and he ended up getting jealous of his brother Abel, I mean Abel he, God sets the examples already before you if you choose not to listen to it that's your problem you make yourself a victim because God is not going to change because of you he's not going to do that that means he got to change for me he's not going to change for me so you have to understand you have to understand. So now, now you understand these rules. Now you're ready to hear what Genesis 1.26 is really saying. Saying. You, 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 you getting ready to hear it right now. The, what, what's going on. And I want you to listen to my terminology that I use in these scriptures. As for the breakdown of it. The breakdown of it. The Almighty Father is saying in Genesis 1.26 so you need to listen very carefully and pay attention to what I'm saying Yah which is the Father said let us create man to look like us and to have our manners with our special qualities to behave live with our custom and we should give him give them power to rule the earth why? I'm going to read that one more time so you can understand what just happened and what what Notice what I said, the name Yah. Notice what I use. Because you got to understand who he is in this, in this beginning. The Almighty Father is seen in Genesis 126. So let, in 126, this is what he's saying. Yah, which is the Father, said, let us create man to look like us. To have our manners with our special qualities to behave and live with our customs and we shall give them power to rule the earth. Notice how I say customs to worship, pray, and honor me. That's his custom to live, to do, to act, behave. Custom. Understand when I just use the word custom. That's what that's that. That's what I like about when I broke it down. It, it gets so much interesting than what I just read. And I'm gonna I'm gonna read the breakdown of what I broke down. And I'm gonna read the, the original structure. It gets so much interesting. It, it's so much interesting because you read the thing, you really don't know what God is saying. Genesis 1, 20, and God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have domain over the animals and the earth. Okay? Interesting, interesting. Y'all, which is the Father, said, let us create man to look like us, and to have our manners with our special qualities, to behave and live with our customs, and we shall give them power to rule over the earth. Wow. What a big difference. What a big difference. What a big difference. What a what what a what a big difference. Cause that says a lot. That says a lot. As you see in Genesis 1:26, y'all mission, y'all mission statement, goals, and purpose for our lives. This is so amazing. Because this is y'all speaking to us in the beginning about life. And why they have created us is awesome. Awesome. That they created us to look like them. 
and to have their special qualities. To think, to act, to talk, to walk, to live with their customs. The world defines us as human beings, but y'all said we are special and different. As a man, this is important to understand where our manhood hood comes from. Our manhood comes from Yah and not the real government or people of so-called power. So you have to understand, manhood is very important. You got to understand who God say you are. Because you can't go by who man say you are. Because man is all about downplaying or trying to make you feel insignificant to take advantage of you. And we go, we, it's like, it's just like scripture just pouring through my mind and my head. But I know it's too much to give you at one time. I know it, but it's just so much. It's like the more I talk, the more this come to my mind, that come to my mind. And it's like, I can't even give it to you because you, you, I have to bring you to the level where you can really receive it. Really receive it. So you, so you have to understand who God say you are. You can't say, oh, the teacher say I'm not smart enough. Did God say you're not smart enough? You have to go where y'all say. Oh, my friend say I'm ugly. Did y'all say you ugly? Y'all say he made you unique with his special qualities to look like him. That's what you have to go by. You can't go by what people say. You can't go by what the government say you can't go by because this person said I own this building and I got this you cannot go by that you have to go by the creator who he said you are that's what you got if he says you're unique you're unique if he says you're special you're special if he says you're beautiful you're beautiful if he says you're awesome you're awesome you don't question him what he says about you Cause now you serve a man and not God when you take on those characteristics or oh, this person said I'm this. Now you serving them and not God. You have to serve God. You have to understand where your manhood is coming from. Your manhood is not coming from the powers of this earth. It comes from Yah, the creator of this earth. That's where it comes from. That's where it comes. It comes from that. From that point on. Part of this mission statement in Genesis 1.28. And Genesis 1.28 says, Let us know, let, let us know that y'all bless Adam and Eve to produce, to be productive, produce success while conquering and building up the earth. Wow. Again, you have to go back. You have to read it for yourself. Genesis 128. Let us know. Y'all blesses Adam and Eve to be productive, produce, successes, while conquering and building up the earth. So now, if you're not conquering, you're not being productive, you're not building up your household, building up yourself, building up your community, you're not doing what God told you to do. Those, those, those are things that God commanded out of you because what he put in you okay so so you have to understand that that's what God put in you he put in you to do these things Genesis 2 15 is where Yah gives Adam his first responsibility to keep and decorate the garden Genesis 2 15 is where Yah gives Adam his first responsibility to keep and decorate the garden. Then God gave Adam more responsibility. Like naming the animals. I want you to pay attention to how y'all put Adam in the garden. With the animals, food, trees and grass. Before he created Eve. Y'all gave Adam responsibilities. Before Eve was created. Uh, at the end I told y'all I read the rules. But I want you to pay attention to my last thing. Y'all gave Adam responsibilities before he created Eve. What that tell you, man? What that tell you, man? God gave Adam food, trees, told him to decorate the garden. 
Name the animals before he created Eve. What that tell you? What that tells you, my people? Hmm? What do that tell you? So you can clearly see a man have to prepare for a woman. That's what it tells you. A man has to prepare for a woman. That's what it tells you. You have to prepare for a woman. You can't just go and get a woman because she look beautiful. Mm -mm. You have to be prepared for her. Because God showed you through example when he created Adam. He gave Adam responsibility. Adam had duties he had to do. Certain things had to be in place before he created Eve. Certain things was done before Eve was created. So you as a man, certain things has to be done when you taking somebody's daughter out of their parents' house, son. You just can't take her to my home. I feel like I love her. You can't do that, son. You cannot do that. If you really love her, you're going to leave her where she at because she's well taken care of where she's at. If you really care about it like you say you do. You just can't go and take nobody's daughter. You don't, you don't have nothing to offer. So you have to prepare for a woman. That's what God is showing you. He's showing you you have to prepare for a woman. You have to prepare for her. Certain things you have to have in place for her. Guys, you can't take a woman from her parents' house because you feel like you are in love and you feel like you have to be, you have to, because you feel like you in love. You have to be prepared for that woman. Woman. How you going to take a girl out of her mama's house? You can't even buy a girl a cup of soup. How you going to do that? You can't even buy a poor girl going to be hungry living with you. Then you want to take and live in a rooming house. <laughs> for for y'all don't know what a rumor house is. A rumor house is like a halfway house with a bunch of crackheads and people on here around living in there with all type of insects and diseases running around. You want to take this girl out of her mama house and put her in the pits of hell? No, you can't do that. You got to leave her where she's safe at. You can't 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 you can't even buy the girl nothing. She got to live with you and eat a mayonnaise sandwich, eat bread with nothing on it. How you gonna feed girl something with bread and nothing on? Oh, you gonna have that girlfriend eat cornflakes with no milk? Huh? Huh? You gonna buy the girl bacon with nothing to cook it on? You can't do that. You can't. You gotta leave her where she's well taken care of. You can't do that as a man. You have to take care of your woman. Huh? You got. You got to do that. You got to do that. You got to. You got to understand women are very expensive things, man. Because they got to have certain things. You you, you can't even buy a girl to pay a, a, a cup of soup to eat. Huh? Oh, man. You don't even know what goes on when it comes to a woman, man. You you slick. You slick. If that's what you think, you can't even buy her cornflakes and milk. You can't even get her no cornflakes and milk. You got to get her cornflakes without the milk. You're not ready for it. Leave her where she's at. Leave her where she's at. You have to be prepared for that woman. You gotta leave her where she at. You, you, you can't do nothing. You gotta leave her where she at, man. Because everything she getting, her parents providing that for her. She go with you. Her parents are no longer obligated to provide those things. Unless she's able to provide it for herself. Now, if she's able to do it for herself and she want to be with you, that, that's cool too. If she's willing to take care of you, I mean, that's that's between you and her. You know, but that ain't what y'all say, let her take care of you. Y'all didn't tell y'all told you to work even if she's willing to take care of you. Y'all still say it work. So that's what you still need to do, be a man. You need to live up to the expectations of y'all. Period. You have to live up to the spe expectations of y'all. If you know your mind not right, you got to leave her home. You got to leave her home. You know you've been cheated on. People don't hurt you. People don't. You meet this good woman. Leave her home. Because she don't need to be dealing with your foolishness. 
and your mental issues. Leave her home. Leave her home. Leave her home. You know you're in the game. You're playing the game. You know a person could come by, kill you, drive by you, and all that. Leave that girl home because she don't need to be getting killed over your foolishness. Leave her home. Leave her home. You're having problems on the street. You're having problems with the law. Leave that girl home where she belongs. Leave her alone. You're not ready for her. You're not prepared for her. You're not. You're not. Then you wonder why her parents don't like you because they know you're putting her daughter life in danger, boy. Who gonna like you? Nobody's not gonna like you. You putting that kid's life in danger, son. You gotta get yourself right. And how could you live with yourself knowing that this girl followed you and somebody did a drive-by and shot her because of your foolishness? Come on, it's time to grow. It's time to mature. It's time to get to the level God is calling you to. It's time to do it. It's time to do it. I told you, this is welcome to the game because this is the game. I'm not going to sugarcoat to try to plea and try to make people happy and try. I look, I'm not looking for a, 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 um, a crew. I'm not looking for that. I'm just telling you as a man what you need to do. You know you got these things going on. You leave them girls alone. You know your mind all right where you can invite her in a more comfortable, safe, loving, stress-free environment. You leave her alone. She don't need to be with you and you running from the police. She don't need to be dealing with you. You got the police kicking down your door. She don't need to be dealing with you and she and, 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 and people in and out the house. Leave that child home. With her parents, where she's safe. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Leave her where she's at. She don't need that. She do, she do not need. You have to prepare for a woman, man. You have to. You have to prepare for. Her. You have to. So you know you're doing drugs. You know you on drugs. You're addicted to drugs. Leave the girl home. She don't need to be feeling your drugs. She don't need to get hooked on drugs. When you're mad, if she run on drugs. So you need to leave her where she at, where she stays off drug. Okay, she you let her meet a decent guy who have enough sense not to invite her to getting high and get and getting on cocaine and hair on and all that stuff. No, leave her home where she belongs. You don't destroy people's lives. Okay? So so if you're not ready for a woman and you're not prepared for a woman, you leave her home. Maybe God will bless you for doing an honorable thing for once in your life. Okay, I'm finna read off the rules. So um, pay attention. Uh, a man must work, being a man of your word, provider, love, responsibility, produce, increase, and grow, to build up or inspire, to conquer, have the mind of y'all, obedience to y'all, and leader and leadership. So those those are the rules. I'm reading I'm gonna read it off to you again. And you can find all rules and instructions in the chapters I read, of course. Uh, a man must work, being a man of your word, a provider, love, responsibility, productive, increase, and grow to build up our inspire, to conquer, and have the mind of y'all, obedience to y'all, and leadership. Thank you, this is Tavares, and I'm out.